why we're needing to have more women in the workforce. And then the second thing I'm going to do is, I think I've got a list of what I'm going to do, is uh, also talk about what we can do um, in an organisation to make this happen. I am a scientist, so I like to do things which are based on evidence. So let's look at the evidence of why we need more women. So the first thing is women are 46% of the, um, all employees. Uh, they have a 60, of all the population, 60% are engaged in the workforce compared to, um, I'm going to have a bit closer, I can see about 70% of men, so not as many women are working. We've got uh, a problem that women get paid about 16% less than men. Uh, we find that women, because they haven't worked as much, they only have 53% of the superannuation balance, so when we retire, we're going to be poor. Uh, that 90% compared to 86% of women have finished high school, and 40% uh, have uh, bachelor's degrees compared to 30% of men, so we're better educated. Yet 42, 14% uh, are chairs of boards in companies, 23% are on boards, and uh, only 15% of companies have women as CEOs. So why do we need women in the workforce? I've talked about uh, e equity so far, but there's actually good economic reasons. The first one is that there's all this research that shows when women work, economies grow, and we need economies to grow for the world to go around. Uh, for example, if you were to have somewhere up to 44% of women on um, a board, you will get an increase of 26% on our return on your capital investment. And then having uh, gender mixed workforces in the workplace means that you end up with greater innovation and better outcomes when you're problem solving. So mixed teams have better outcomes. But the thing is that this really shows in the bottom line. So for example, for Australia, let's think big picture, you would actually see by closing the gap of men and women in the workforce, we'd have things like an 11% growth in GDP. Uh, if we increase our participation of women in the workforce to that of Canada, we'd see a $25 billion increase in, um, in growth in our economy. We'd see increasing numbers of women in leadership positions, leading to economic boost of 20%. And the flow on effects mean that having more women in the workforce, earning more money, there'll be um, reduced pension costs, you'll end up with uh, lifting household savings and also increasing tax revenue. If you actually have women working in the workforce, you will find that you'll have better customer satisfaction. I've just got a little list there. Better productivity, better, profit, better profitability. And so it goes on and on. So that there is absolutely an economic reason why you need to employ more women in your company. So why is it, all the data's there, why is it that we don't have more women in the workforce? What is it that's making it so that it's not an obvious thing to do? And the reason is it's a very complex problem. In fact, we start off by the fact that we do not have a level playing field. And what do I mean by that? The first thing is that from the moment you are born, what is the thing people look and ask when a baby pops out? Is it a boy or is it a girl? And the thing is, it doesn't matter whether you've got all your fingers and toes, what they want to know is your gender because how people relate to you is very much dependent on whether they know your gender. But that also happens when we make decisions about people as well. So uh, we heard about um, Nature magazine being a great, great place for universities to publish their research, which is terrific. It's you know, the benchmark to go to. But some work that was done and published in Nature, I think I've circled it there, yes, uh, went and looked at when people, males and females, assess, in this case, grant applications. They found that for, men, for women to get the same ranking as a male, they had to have 2.5 times more productivity in order to be able to get that same ranking. Another thing is this idea of um, looking at um, when we're making appointments. This was an experiment done where they had the same CV, just changed the gender. And they found that, uh, you can see here, we're in competence, a higher ability of mentoring, that um, the males were scored higher, exactly the same CV. And the same thing happened is that the uh, starting salary was quite a big difference based on uh, just who, what gender you are. So that's one thing, we've got this unconscious bias. But the other is also um, men and women actually have different, different experiences in life. So if we look at career path against uh, age or ex uh, life, you know, here I put li age or life experience, the thing you will find is that the traditional thing is you get promoted, go up until you get your Peter principle and then you, like, you plateau. But if you have females, you talk to young women and say, I don't get all this gender difference, I've had a great time. 
And then suddenly happens when they hit their 30s, they suddenly get this plateau. Quite often it coincides with having children, but it seems to happen even for women who do not have children. But something amazing happens. If they don't disappear from the workforce, which many women do, uh, you find that very many women in their late 40s, early 50s, start having their careers kicking off. And what you see is that they start accelerating in their opportunities and how they're able to engage in the workforce and how they're able to have great success. So what are we going to do? Why are we going to change all these things? Well, let's go back to when Kylie was a motor mechanic in Neighbours. Um, you'll remember that we often hear, uh, it's been said by Elizabeth Broderick and many people, uh, senior women in Australia, saying that you can't be what you can't see. And this is a classic example. When Kylie was a motor mechanic in Neighbours, before she became a pop star, um, she uh, encouraged a whole lot of young women to become motor mechanics. And there was a huge spike in girls doing motor mechanics in TAFE. As soon as she became a pop star, that dropped away. So it does have a huge impact on having that recognition by putting women up there at the top that people follow, women follow. So let's start at the top. What are some things that we can do? First is, of course, having more women on boards. That's an easy one and in executive positions. The next one is uh, making sure that we have robust talent pipelines. And I've got a list of things here, having vital uh, that we have role models, that we dismantle the barriers so that it's easy for women to be able to be selected and, and advance. But let's look at some specific things. And I've got my nine handy hints. The first one is challenge the workplace culture. And we've heard about some really good examples today already. What can we do to change the way we do work? Why is it we have to do it the way we've always done it? This is something which is um, really challenging now that we're able to take IT and do it anywhere. Why is it we have to actually be at work to do work? Make senior leaders accountable for diversity and uh, particularly gender diversity in the workplace, but all diversity. It's not just an HR issue. If you see the leader of an organisation uh, really making a difference there, you will see it happens all the way down the organisation. You need to address gender balance head on and not just hope that somehow the doing one tweak somewhere will make a difference. Organisations that really get in there and make a difference and, and really do things will see change. We need to be able to sponsor women so that they're able to uh, realise that they can put their hand up and get that opportunity. We need to make sure that we have good learning programs so that they are not just um, sitting and chalking and talking but also having that experiential thing. And one of the things that really is important is that quite often when a woman gets invited to take on a new task, you remember the, all that housework they've got to do and all the families they've got to look after? They can't usually just say, yeah, okay, sounds great. Quite often they'll say, maybe. This has happened to me a lot of times and I've seen it happen to other women too. And that maybe was really maybe, but when they went home, well, organised the extra childcare and did all the stuff to make sure that they were available to do that extra high level job, the time they came back saying, yes, I'm ready to do it, they say, oh, sorry, I thought I actually... Uh, you, you didn't want to do it and I gave it to someone else. And that happens many, many times. So for women, either say yes and then say no if you can't really do it. Or for those of us who hear women saying maybe, take it as yes. The other one is also be a strong employer of advertising the importance of science, technology, engineering and maths in your business. You heard about a whole lot of things today and every one of them actually has a level of science and technology behind it. We are becoming a nation where people are not realising the importance of of these subjects at school. We're seeing the numbers of people, boys and girls, doing these subjects in high school <coughs> dropping away. And we're getting, going to end up with a community that does not recognise the importance of science and technology and being able to be tech savvy and also understanding that they have the empowerment to engage and help make decisions. So there are things a company can do. What are strategies that we as women or people in general can do? What can we take? So the first thing is don't wait for the system to change. Just get in there and start thinking about what you can do. But quite often it can be that we're not feeling confident enough. And so I'm going to go through and give you some um, things which I've learnt that have made a difference to me, especially when I'm not feeling confident. Apart from eating a good dinner, uh, one thing is help to feel powerful. And there's this great um, uh, 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 YouTube video by Amy Cuddy, which I'm uh, not sure if it's completely scientifically correct, but that doesn't matter, the thing works. And that is that when you are in a power or, or cuddled down, you actually reduce your power enormously and you feel weak and, and unable to engage. Well, if you have this thing where you open up your body and it, 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 there's measures done, and I think I've got a graph here that shows that uh, by measuring your cortisol level, which is stress, and your testosterone, which is your ability to feel strong and active, 
uh, they reverse depending on whether you're like this, your cortisol is high and your testosterone is low, and up and open is, um, is the other way around. The other is also remembering to be a glass half full. I just want to know, has, um, I'm one, looking for the person who's had the perfect life. Uh, can you put your hand up um, <laughs> if everything has always gone right for you? I'm still looking, okay. And that is that everyone has things go wrong. In fact, that's human, um, the human nature, the human condition. So we need to learn to see that we can turn lemonade, lemons into lemonade, how to stop blaming. When something goes wrong, use it as an opportunity to learn and improve. Turn that disappointment into an opportunity. So if something goes wrong and that's the pathway you weren't going to take, turn around and move to a pathway that is new and different because usually there's something even more exciting waiting for you there. And look at every possibility to learn and to develop because there's always something new we can learn that really we can build on and take our, our lives to another level. Learn to love life, especially in a country like Australia. We are so lucky here. We should be loving life every moment of every day. There is so much which we have that so many other people don't have. Open our hearts to acts of kindness. You can never go wrong by just being kind for another person. And also take care of yourself. We've heard a bit about that this afternoon, that if you take care of yourself, you can really make a very big difference. But something that's probably most important and a big issue for women is that they often don't put their hand up. When we're looking for volunteers for things, being prepared to apply for jobs, women will only do this if they're 95% sure they're going to have um, cover all the criteria or that they've got a chance of winning. We need to learn, particularly uh, people who English isn't their first language or if you're a softly spoken person, and that's often females, you need to learn to fi find your voice. The number of times we hear people talking softly, we don't hear what they say. You've got to learn to project your voice and talk to the back of the room. Learn to give a good talk because we have to pitch our ideas all the time. Unfortunately, they say that most people would prefer death than giving a talk, but I can assure you the more you practice, the better you get at it. And the other thing is often we have to deal with people we really don't like or find difficult to handle. They could be your partner, your children, or someone at work. <laughs> and it's amazing how thinking of 10 things that you like about that person before you walk into the room can just change your, your, your whole physical being. It's a bit like the power pose. Uh, the power pose, we've said, keep fit. We've heard about that. And this is something which, for particularly women who often have this responsibility, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the panic comes in saying, what are we having for dinner tonight? My secret to success is, and this changed my life, one of my colleagues at work gave me this, and I loved it so much that I married him. And that was <laughs> that every, um, every week you make a list of what you're going to have for the week, go and do the shopping for it. Or, uh, and, um, and then make sure that you know what you're going to have and plan. It just takes all the pressure away. It really did make a huge difference. Again, for women, it's one of the biggest issues that what we wear is really important. We decide on people seven seconds after we meet them. So if you get your dress wrong, people can make a terrible uh, opinion about you, which can actually end up just because you got it wrong that day. So what I will I wear today is something, uh, go, never go to bed without knowing that. Don't worry about housework and make technology work for you. Make sure things are always charged. Learn how to use programs. Remember that mentoring counts. Remember that you need to join groups and participate. Make sure that you're helpful and, and learn professional things from engaging in your community. Make sure you get that balance right and, um, and learn to say no when you need to. Remember that everything you learn every day, even non-work experiences, can help you in your workplace. And make sure that you realise what happens at work affects people even when they go home. So if you're having a bad hair day and having it out on a staff member, remember that they have a mother or a father or someone who loves them too. And feel empowered to make change. Don't just sit there and wait for things to happen. If it's not working for you, put your hand up and make something different. But if it is toxic, don't be afraid to walk away from it. Remember to be different, you have to do different. Even Dr Phil said that. And prioritise. So some guiding thoughts. When the options and environment are more welcoming for women, you'll find that they're, they're, they're there in truckloads. Bias and lack of recognition uh, is holding back not just your organisation but the whole of Australia. It's a false economy to not use our full human potential. And uh, we need to change the default rules on how we do work. So we can all be like Wonder Woman or by Linda Burney or I just want to highlight um, our Australian of the Year who's a colleague of mine who's a quantum physicist uh, Michelle Simmons, who is, shows that you can be a young mother and you can be an amazing person and really change the world.